Well, it's a fact most people get their news from TV, and it's also a fact that news viewing habits are based on anchor preferences. Even though the network newscast pride weight and no, the local affiliates show slightly more diversity. Women have moved into the anchor seat. And today we have where we talk with this familiar business. Please welcome to age wise Sally Wigan from WTAE. Patrice D. Brown Gigate, Penny Cutting Peaks from Fox 53 WPGH. I am thrilled from all of you. And you are all such strong women who have enviable jobs. Oh, because I was there. It's fun. It's um, exciting. No stress. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you going with this? <laughs> we are. Thank you. I want to know how all of you. And this is probably the only one question I'm going to ask all of you because I'm in the with all of the names, young women, of being a, a broadcaster. And Sally, you're the only one that you did. You took a very strange path because you were an Asian studies. studies but I would have to do. I was in a zoology. I didn't have to touch that. No, I mean, I'm, I'm the one who probably who's it, would put the young house because I want to be a child. But you do this so well. I mean, you are enjoying it. Remember that Dolomar? Absolutely. That Dolomar once said something to me that I took to heart. She said, you know, just because you do something well, doesn't mean you have to like it or embrace it or have a passion for it. I mean, it, it may be your vocation, but it may not be your passion. Now, Patrice, you started in this business in, in sales, and then you came to news anchoring by a, a talk show. Yes. yes. Well, actually, it was, but I'll tell you, the, the sales was, was a job. That was something that was, I needed a job out of college, and I was very fortunate to get one. But I really did want to do television when I was very young. I, I was another one of those people who was going to be like Douglas. You know, I used to watch him when I was very little, and I'd say, I could do that, you know? And, and I would do commercials in the house, and, you know, it was, it was one of those kind of things. Yeah, Adam Lynch told me he used to talk in voice of a basket. Yeah, what about you? Well, I, I think I always, I mean, didn't really know for sure until college, but even as a young child, I remember the family gathered around the television set when Martin Luther King was shot, when Kennedy was assassinated, when man walked on the moon. And these were images that came into our home. It impressed me as a child, these inc the incredible power of the television medium. And I think that I always really wanted to be a part of that, but didn't know for sure until I got to college. And, and uh, at Marquette University, I was able to work at the little television station that they had there, and that's when I think of our you were a journalist major? I was a broadcast communications major. Sheila? I had no desire to be in television until I got into college. Yeah, I wanted to be in uh, voice and theater and uh, was dating a disc jockey in college and thought, you know, I love to write, I love to speak. I was in the speech team in college and I thought, this is what I want to do, be in radio, not TV. But through the course of broadcast journalism, I learned radio and television, discovered television, and I said, Where, whoever gives me my first job, whether it be radio or television, I'll go with it, and that's what happened. I'd like to add to this later, but you mentioned something, and you love uh, writing. When people ask me about how do you get into this business, I say you better learn to write them. Absolutely. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? The best writers are usually the best readers. So when you talk to kids in school, you say, read, 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 because everybody I knew who wrote really well, uh, the greatest journalists, were people who are just voracious readers. And you have to be a storyteller. Really do that. And I'd love to do that since I was a kid. You have to have words. Oh, yeah. Okay, is it, is it tough being a woman today in broadcasting, especially when you get into your 30s and 40s? 40s, I think, is harder when, when you get into your late 40s. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Awesome. Oh, oh. You know what? You know what? I have to tell you, it, it starts getting tough in your late 40s. You look around the newsroom and you see everybody under 35, and and you, you feel like a mentor, but at the same time, you, when you start forgetting things, you, you, you have trouble at living sometimes. I'm going to admit this. I have trouble at living because I go into a block, I'll forget. And it's because I, I know that my body is changing, and I know people don't want to admit it, but Leslie Stahl talks about it in her book. And, and uh, I'll lose a name. I'll forget. You know, Barbara Van Sheer in the post, he said, uh, told me that she has written many, many stories about men retiring from broadcasting in the city. She's waiting to write the first story about a woman who has retired.
retired voluntarily from the business. As of this moment in time, no woman in this market has, you just said it's not going to happen. It's always going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And it's not going to change that, though. All right, you know, I, I have been here in this market, and I'm here at KDK 22 years, and I hope that I have... I feel as if I have a lot more to give and I have a lot more time. Hopefully, I will be able to stay to a retirement, although you wonder when retirement is, you know? <laughs> but do you want right. to? Oh, I'm sorry, you're... No, that's <laughs> right. I, just, I wanted, that's this right. is an opportunity for us to talk. To sit back. Do you want to just go right ahead? Do you I mean, think? This is the easiest show I've ever done. Why don't you all just ask each other questions? Did you, I mean, do you... Did, I mean, you're still doing this. Do you really? I, oh. I've reinvented myself so many See, yes. times. Yes, you I mean, do you think? Uh, do you think that I would be in front of a camera today if I were in a newsroom? Heck, no. I knew that. I mean, the writing was on the wall. So I said, "Hey, you're going to find a show called Age Wise, where you can let all this stuff hang out. No one's going to say." Wow, she's pretty old to be on television. So you reinvent yourself. Now I you gr right. go back, go back. Well, you paved changing. the way for the rest of I us. Do. Yes. I think it's yes, you changing. Did. You're yes, an you example. Did, and Sally is going to be the one who retires maybe someday, and Barbara can do the story on Sally because Sally, you're so loved in this market, and I don't, I can't imagine. That's a pot calling the kettle black. The pot's <laughs> calling the kettle black. Everyone here, everyone, we really, we women in this market have been very fortunate. I agree mm -hmm. with you. Don't you think? I think it's a mm -hmm. female dominated market yeah. as far as, yeah. you know, we identify the stations by the women as opposed to yeah. by the men. And that I think that's happened in, in the last market. 10 years. But yeah. the environment I think 10 years is changing on a national market. level, too, and that's going to help us. And I, I think people, you know, the baby boomers are our age, too. Right, you know, right. they're. They're and accepting of us. Right, well, what what, what about job security? Uh, you know, so much of tele television news is the profit center. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everything is based on the ratings. Oh, we're going into we're in the May Box. sweeps. We'll talk about mm -hmm. that in a minute. Uh, do you feel secure in your job? I know you're all contract performers, but I also know that contracts have big loopholes in. They always, you know, management always has a way of. Do you sit on the edge of your seat and saying, oh, I hope we're not going to get a new manager or the ratings slip? Mm. I think if you do that, mm. you'll drive yeah, yourself absolutely. crazy. I personally mm -hmm. don't do no. that. You don't need to. I think we all think about it, though. What? I think it crosses your yes, mind, but it's yeah. not something that you worry about day in and day out. I don't you fret about it. Afford right. to fret Which about. one of you want to briefly explain the rating sweeps? Oh, not me. No? <laughs> I was okay. going to say Sally. Uh, all right. Well, I know that your station, KDKA, your, your station has decided they're not going to go into the, the contests right. and so on to pump up the ratings. But you're going to do something else, I read. You're going to do health news for 20 nights. That's right. What they disease did you that. get? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I hate to put it that way. One of the reports that I am working on is obesity. Okay. And it's because it's a, one of the number one killers, they say, okay. that, um, of, of people all across the country. And to explain why. And how that all works. They've decided to focus on that. I think in, in our sweeps period, Eleanor, everyone wants to give information because they want people to mm -hmm. watch. Mm -hmm. And and it may not be a contest, but it, they're still encouraging viewers. And hopefully, you know, health is important. So they're hoping well, to TV, for that. Well, TV viewers are very savvy. And we know that during the sweeps, we get the best right. of everything. Mm -hmm. We get the best of the sitcoms. We get the best of the, from the networks. We get all the super series from the local news. What's your station doing for sweeps? A lot of investigative reports, and, and I, I'm, I'm not just saying this to be obsequious uh, about our people, but we now have two incredible investigative reporters who are really doing substantive pieces. One of them is about the trucking industry. They're doing another piece I, I know of, I, I can't say, but I know what they're working on. And I think investigative pieces will probably, okay. probably be the highlight. Anything special at Channel 11? Oh, we've got so much coming up. We had a, <laughs> we had a big meeting the night before where it was basically, you know, a rah-rah rallying session. We gotta get We've em. got mm -hmm. consumer reports, you know, medical reports. We also have an investigative unit and they've all been working so hard. Sheila? You won't see contests on our station or too many investigative reports. You'll see a few special reports and that's it. We try to be consistent month to month and not just pump it up for the ratings. Okay, oh, when, we come, back, when <laughs> yeah, we come back, when we come back, big question. What is a typical day like for these women? We're going to find out, so don't go away. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Carolee Espy, and Monday on Q, we're going to have a bunch of free thinkers here. They are members of the so-called New Ideas Factory, a group of Allegheny County citizens chosen to come up with solutions for things like economic development, technology, marketing, even the airport. Also on Monday, we will have some uh, political therapy with OnQ political analysts John Delano and Heather Heidelball. We will find out if two presidential candidates plan to mend the fences here in Pittsburgh. We are live at 7.30 Monday on Q. Oh, welcome back. We have the ladies of the evening with us. Oh. I have the news evening. Sheila Highland and Peggy Finnegan, Patrice King Brown, and Sally Wigan. Okay, your typical day. You said it's not the same as it used to no, be. No, not when you report full time. When you or or if you reported and and then maybe weekend anchored or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, that's a grind. And I look at the reporters now, mm -hmm. and and it's something that young people often do because it's hard. Uh, typical day is you come in, uh, you look at your scripts, you go into the uh, 11 o'clock story meeting, offer some ideas, if you have them, which I generally don't anymore, and uh, <laughs> they just dried up. But, uh, and, and then you, you look through the scripts, you should go and, and talk with the producers. Um, I am remiss sometimes. Um, and uh, You don't go out me, in the field a lot anymore, do you? You know, when I started, when I was going out in the field, it was for sports because we had all those football specials. Mm -hmm. So I was finding that I went out in the field for sports shows right. as much as anything. And then during the ratings period, Peggy does special reports. I think all of the anchors do. Mm -hmm. And so you go out in the field then. And, and I do miss it because you don't want to go out in a way you sort of yeah. get lethargic. But then when you actually are out there and you it's remember what it was yeah, like, it's it is fun. Well, but I, I have agree. to tell you, I have to tell you, um, you women who are working the late shift, she Sheila, I love it. You're on at 10 o'clock. I can really get oh, through. Yeah. I'm fairly alert when I'm watching you. Yes. <laughs> you too. I'm we a get the early rises. Yeah, 11 o'clock. Patrice, tough. you have a teenager at home. How do you? How, do how do does that, that work oh my with a teenage daughter and you're working till midnight? Well, you know, fortunately, my husband's schedule is a little more flexible. We have some flexibility there, and I negotiated a time into my contract mm -hmm. because raising Lauren was that important, right. that I can go home after a newscast, at the early newscast, if, if I'm not solo anchoring, if there's mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. news emergency, spend some time, mm -hmm. you know, check on her life, check on her homework, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. see who's oh, around, whatever, and I then, know so then well. come back in. I know so you, well. You know, I did it all, I did it for years. But you have to. And then you don't feel like going back in, oh. do you? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the toughest thing, back is going back in, mm -hmm. you know, around mm -hmm. 9 o'clock. No, I don't have that flexibility with mine. I'm there eight and a half hours, and I'm working almost the entire time. Time, right, what yes. do you do with Jackie? Well, I get up with her about 7 in the morning. Um, I spend as much of the day with her as I can. I go into work about 2.30, and she goes on to either my mother-in-law's or daycare, and then Daddy picks her up in the mm -hmm. afternoons, and he's with her at night. And so, um, something to think about. Lifestyle is... <laughs> Mm. 21st mm -hmm. century. Oh, yeah. Peggy, I don't even know how to approach you mm -hmm. with oh, four children under the age of seven. Yes. Let me tell you, it was very hard. I was going to say I agree with Sally that when you had to go out and report, when I first came to Pittsburgh and uh, I was reporting and anchoring, it was very difficult. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. when I started to have my children and had to do that 11, that is really, really hard. I was exhausted all the time, and really, I was this close to losing my mind. I mean, I, I really I couldn't do it anymore. No, I and I know there are women hard. who can, mm -hmm. but I couldn't. If I would not have gone to part-time hours, which I must say are wonderful, and I wish it for every working mother, uh, I, I would have quit because I just couldn't yeah. handle it. I have one child and I'm this close to losing <laughs> my mind. <laughs> I mean, you run back and forth so much and at one point before my son was away at college, it was catching up on, you want to be part of their lives, you want, don't want them to always right. say, right. my mother was never able to be there. Because yeah, and how won. do your kids, now you have the, so, the, the oldest right. children, right. how do they or how have they dealt with having a really famous mom? Well, you know, well, Eleanor, it, they have been it involved in television all their lives. It has been all so of their So like everybody's mom. So is it, it is like everybody's mom for them. It's This is what happens. Mm -hmm. And they've been, there are a lot of perks, mm -hmm. you know, that to having a mom on television. There are also a lot of negatives. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes for kids, mm -hmm. people, you know, th they think, you know, they think they're something because their mother's on TV mm -hmm. or, you know, you have I to I don't have to turn in my homework. Right. You know, you have to, you <laughs> always have to work talk through, to the principal. through that kind of thing. And we made sure they didn't walk around with that attitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got uh, so many things to talk to you all about. Private lives. You all have very private lives that you want mm -hmm. to keep private and yet you're, you know, you're under the, the microscope all the time. Peggy, 
you had a big decision to make a few years ago. You had a very serious health problem, and you had to decide whether to keep it private or go public. In a way, uh, she's talking about my breast cancer, which happened in uh, 1994, and it was about four months after my baby was born. I was breastfeeding. It was so, I was so full of hormones anyway and so emotional. To get that kind of diagnosis, I was out of my mind. I was losing it and trying to work and trying to put on a happy face. I was like a robot. I really was. Uh, it was very hard to function and the rumors were flying and I really didn't have a choice. I would like to say to you that I would have ended up making the choice to go public with it but at that time it was so painful that I didn't want anyone to know. I was, I didn't even want to look in the mirror and face it myself you know, so I didn't want to talk about it, but I had to because people were calling the station, uh, you know, the newspapers were finding out about it, and I just kind of had to, you know, put my chin up and realize that I had to face it with the public. And I'm so glad I did because it turned out to be a wonderful thing for me, too. You know, I felt like something good. Well, I think, I, I, I think, and without belaboring th this particular point, I think, Peggy, that you have been an inspiration to, oh, to all absolutely. women. Absolutely. And uh, absolutely. on behalf of all women, I have to thank you oh, for, thank for, you. for going public. Um, as far as your, your personal life is, is concerned, do you ever, and in this question to all of you, do you ever want to go to a restaurant and just sometimes say, hey, leave me alone? <laughs> You know what's interesting, what's happened in my personal life is that people assume certain things when they look at you and when you do something for a living. And actually, quite the contrary may be true of who you are. I found that is the hardest thing for me to do, for me to accept. And so what I find myself doing sometimes is I will tell a bank teller about my private life <laughs> so, that <they> <laughs> so that they understand that who they see and what they assume about me it's is not, exactly the opposite okay, of okay. what and who I really am. I, was, I think that's yes. the hardest thing, don't you? I was just I watching do. Oprah this morning and she <laughs> said she was walking down Michigan Avenue with no makeup and, and a viewer came, fan came up and said, mm -hmm, I know you're in disguise. She said, no, I'm not in disguise. <laughs> this is the way I look this all the, the real time me. when I'm not on the air. Okay, we're going to take another quick break. I don't want to. I want to stay right here. But we'll be back more with Peggy and Sally and Sheila and Patrice right after this. Join Chris Fenimore in the QED kitchen for the best of QED cooks. Four hours of mouthwater recipes from the past seven years of QED cooking marathons. It's nothing but tried and true winners, taste tested by some of Pittsburgh cooks. So if you're looking for meals that are simple, delicious, and something the whole family will enjoy, you can't afford to miss the best of QED cooks. Saturday morning, May 20th, beginning at 10, right here on WQED 13. Here now with my wonderful, wonderful, wonderful friends Patrice and Peggy and Sheila and Sally. I want to talk to you about the cosmetics of oh. TV. <laughs> I know that uh, people will say to me, "Well, I wonder who who does their hair, their makeup, and their wardrobe. Who does your hair, makeup, and wardrobe every night?" I do. That's not now during the ratings period. We have a makeup artist. <laughs> See during the sweep. So it's okay if we look. Look, look you know. I, trying to think of a word that's polite, you know, like, like, caca, or whatever. <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah. On the air? Uh, you, got that like, you got that word in journalism <laughs> school, didn't you? <laughs> but, uh, no, no, we do our, I, I, I do my own hair. Now, during the rating, she helps, but she mainly is there for, uh, um, makeup and the rest of the time I do it myself and most of the time it looks like I do it myself. Sally. With about five Speaking she knows I used to rush in there. Oh let me slap it on here. She's this the is the part that. this is the part she I hate. I just minutes. hate this part. And everybody's probably gonna, you know, call in and say, well it looks like you hate it, you know. <laughs> but I just it's just not me. Sally, let's talk about your hair. I remember and this has to go back for five or six years, you had long, very straight hair and it was it was like a big disc 
point of discussion in the city, Sally's hairdo. Was that your idea or was that a consultant who said, all right? It was probably my hairdressers. Oh, okay. I am a slave to a hairstylist. If they tell me that something should be done, I'll say, okay, and then I'll be upset about it afterwards and I'll go back and ask How them to change it. How often do you have your hair styled? Cut and... Mm. No. Oh, no, I mean, I, I just didn't know if... And color? Oh, yes, this, this is color. Oh. 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 oh, that was a fright wig. That was a no. fright wig. Look. No. It looked like someone had plugged me into a, you know, oh, an electrical no. outfit. Oh, my goodness. That's a perm, obviously, oh, you know. Isn't that awful? I want to see it again. I also look like I have a bib on. Where did I get that blouse? You know what? Actually, where, where did Debbie get that tape? Is what yeah. we want to know. Oh, Sally, oh. you've improved. Oh. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, we have to look at it where again. Where were you there? There what? it is again. Is this look, Pittsburgh? This. Were you here? Yeah. Where was this market? Yeah. It's, that's probably very early. That's like, um, I'm, that's you so disappointing. You darling. <laughs> probably oh, 80 like or something. Well, that's probably, okay. that's, um, Probably 81, 82. Okay. I've been here like a year or two. Sheila, you and Sally worked in the same newsroom for a lot of years. Ten years. Yeah. yeah. Did, did you know it would be kind of neat the two of you had anchored the news all on a permanent basis? Do you think we'll ever be two women as anchors? Well, Sally and I did anchor a few shows mm -hmm. together, and she was very gracious. You mean prime time? Yes, yes. It was yeah. a big opportunity for me. Um, she called us the blonde babes, and I got upset with that because I was trying to pretend like I was really offended by being called a babe. Now I would just please call <laughs> she, her. Well, she did babe. tell me later that she really liked it. After did a while. I really? Yeah, you did. I said that, you know, the blonde she's babe just, newscast. She's, an, she's an excellent anchor. I think she's, she's, she's just, uh, she's a really uh, a top reporter. Um, I, I think it would have been neat if we could have anchored together. Yeah, if you ever yeah, wonder, I would have liked that. I, I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure the people out there are really enjoying this because I'm sure that they they don't understand that there is such real affection. I think between oh, all of us, yeah. we, we have respect and we have mm -hmm. affection, yeah. Yeah. and it's not a competitive thing. No, here are two. I, yeah. brilliant women who work together in the same newsroom and, and it's obvious that you really do like each other. We're friends. Yeah, we are I mean, friends. we really exactly. are. We had a get-together at uh, a luncheon recently yeah, with the, about four um, weeks ago. Yvonne Zanos mm -hmm. and some other people. Yeah. And who yeah. does your hair, makeup, and wardrobe? I do every night as well. Although we do have a makeup artist that comes in every once in a while and shows us how to put it on. And, okay. But I do it. Well, at KDKA, what do they do? Well, we <laughs> basically, I, I've been very fortunate and I've had the same hairstylist for a long time, so I get to see Tony as much as I I can it, it's on your but I do make up occasionally our makeup artist Lori comes in and touches us up but it's our responsibility your fashion your hair your it's on you every night for the most part Peggy, it yeah. always amazes me that people actually think that we have somebody who comes in and <laughs> you know does our hair and our makeup yeah. no we yeah, do it we do it ourselves the only time we have a makeup artist is when they're shooting maybe some new commercials mm -hmm. and it's on mm -hmm. film and the makeup has to be perfect for the lighting and, right. and for the cameras and everything. Peggy, what about wardrobe? I mean, doesn't isn't that a problem? Uh, having to, to buy the clothes can be a problem. Yeah. Women's clothing is so expensive. Yeah. Right. Uh, they have rarely said anything to me. They don't like me in green. Uh, that is about the only thing that I've ever been told. Uh, they've never said to me, "Don't you know wear this jacket again? Don't." do this but one night they said you know your green is not a real flattering color and that's about it so it's really up to you what kind of what kind of uh, what kind of intrusion do you all get from either top management or the consultants and uh, uh, you know there are consultants out there that really conduct focus groups and they say how do you like Sally these days how's Patrice holding mm -hmm. up do you like her hair do you like and and this is a fact of life how much how much static do you get I, I like Peggy said um, we were talking before the show really at this point I, I think not much right. uh, I may do something really stupid like wear something I know is not right, but I've spent the money on it and I just hate wasting <laughs> the money. So I think I'm gonna get Been one there. one wear out of this. And 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 generally I thank them for it because I'm an idiot a lot of times when it when it comes to insisting I do something because I've spent the money. Mm -hmm. That's about the only time that I get any. Mm -hmm. it's, not it's, it's, not, no, it's not as true. Years ago I think there there may have been a little more interest, but we've been at this a while and we also have an idea what may work what not, mm -hmm. so they don't give you so much grief mm -hmm. about it. Patrice, I'm sure that you still have a lot of viewers who come up and remember you so fondly from Pittsburgh today. Was that a tough transition to go from that top to news? show to news? Oh my goodness. It was It was starting life all over again. It was very intimidating. Um, it was very tough. I loved doing Pittsburgh today. It was
was a lot of fun meeting people and talking. And I wasn't sure exactly what the news would bring. And but it's worked out very, very well. It was a tough year, that first year. But it's worked okay, out very, very well. Wow. Oh, my goodness. See, I don't wear things like that on the newscast. Oh, my you goodness. You don't things like that. Oh, that's Jack Scalia. Oh, he was. Oh, <laughs> oh, is this great. Oh, my goodness. Oh. No, when Holly did Mandel. You Let's go back. I also <laughs> don't do that on the air. <laughs> we, I went on the air in Pittsburgh today in um, oh my goodness. in 70, 78, October of seventy eight. Had a nice long run. It did. We ran until January of ninety. So it has now been ten years that I have been doing news. But it was it was a transition. Pittsburgh today though was the best thing that could have ever happened to my news career because one advantage that gave me, I think, is that people had an opportunity to meet my family, to see me in a completely different light. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't always behind a desk and had, they had to mention what was going on in my life. I would be sharing it all with them. It was a gift. Yeah, we are going to um continue the conversation. This wasn't planned, but we're having so much fun. <laughs> Assume you are too. So we're going to bring you part two of this wonderful <laughs> chat next week. But right now I have to thank you for watching part one. Join me the week after next, and I think, I, I don't know, I've got a producer in there that's probably saying yes, no, but uh, our next show, after we're finished with the ladies of the evening, will be with Jim Rowley. He's going to be here, and we're going to get a report card on his four months in office. Until then, I'm Ellen Urshango. Remember, a good job right here. Tell everyone, and have a great week. Set provided by Linders, located on Yonker Street, McKee's Rocks. Two acres of fabulous stuff. It's been a Saturday night family tradition for generations. Enjoy the nostalgic musical variety of The Lawrence Welk Show, coming up next, here on WQED 13. right here with me last pleasure this week <laughs> but we were just having so much fun and we decided to allow you to eavesdrop and, and actually that's what this conversation is going to be you are going to be eavesdropping on what really goes on behind the scenes in television news up to my right Sally Wigan Channel 4 and next to her Sheila Highland TV WP GH TV 53 I got it Patrice <laughs> King Brown, KDKA, and Peggy Finnegan, WPXI. I want you to know that I worked at every one of these <laughs> stations. Why? At every that single one, one. I have sat in every one of those chairs and been through every one of You've those had a great doors. Career, yeah. In fact, KDKA twice. Once was not enough. <laughs> Came back but again. 15 years at uh, that's Channel right when 4. we did when we had the 40th anniversary. That's right. You were there at the big party. That's right. That's right. You're just so amazing. Well, we are going to continue our our conversation. There's so much uh, so much to talk about. Um, let's talk for a minute though about how television has changed since each of you entered the business, and which of you has been in the business the longest. Actually, I probably have not been in the business as long as Patrice, even though I'm older, because I, I did not intend to go into the business, mm -hmm. and I was headed toward becoming a professor of Chinese history, so. I mean, yeah, you, you definitely <laughs> took a curve. <laughs> I, like, yeah. I think I, I can only obviously speak about news in the past 10 years, but I think that, that the media television, the ability to, with the satellites and, and feeds from all over the country and bringing information as quickly as, as it does brings wonderful pluses, but it also brings some negatives. And that is that often news is presented or there's, there was a bombing or there was a, an emergency in an area, and that's all the information we have. But because of ratings wars, too, you report that and say, mm -hmm. we'll get back to you with the rest. Mm -hmm. And I think in some levels, that frustrates viewers. Mm -hmm. it, I know it frustrates me. I, I think the combination of remote control and this plethora of channels right. Right. has really changed it for all of us and changed the, the, the form of our newscasts. And it's maddening for the uh, viewers. It's maddening for all of us mm -hmm. because we're always constantly doing things to keep people from changing, changing the, the channel. Channel. Right. channel. It's created a lot right. more pressure for us. And, and, it's, and it's more about the bottom line now, too. Mm -hmm. now, it's that, now that mm -hmm. news can make money. Right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, it's narrow casting now. I think when, when CNN came on the scene, it, it, 
kind of changed forever television news. And I, I just read last uh, week, a couple of weeks ago, Rob Owen was writing about how TV viewership is gone down. So this has to be a concern, uh, an industry-wide con concern. Do you see people continuing to, to be addicted to the early and late evening news? Oh, I think there's always going to be a place for your yes. local news, mm -hmm. always. But it does make the battle tougher. And I think everybody's working harder. But we have, since I came into the industry 20 years ago, so much more. You know, now we can, there can be a shooting in Wilkinsburg, and we can carry it live for hours. Well, I, I don't remember ever doing that before. We'd break in, somebody would have a live report. Now there are helicopters. And there are just so many venues. Plus, Channel 11 now started a cable station. And so, if we're not on Channel 11, we're working on a cable station. Peggy, there are there are people out there now who are actually getting their news from the internet, and they'll oh, yes. they'll get their news from the internet. They'll get their news from the newspaper, and they're not quite as compelled to check in at 11. But you know what? What, what we've done, I think some of the other stations may have done this also. We have the PittsburghChannel.com, and they get they feed us, we feed them. They're in the, on the same floor with us, and so. But I think a lot of stations and and television organizations are trying to do is instead of let the web take over and, and nix them, is they're trying to incorporate it, oh, which yes. is what they did with cable. Right, I mean, right. they said, okay, we're going to, you instead know, we're going to incorporate Fighting this. against them, right. they're and, with and them. And you have, have to, face. You have right. to be or that way with the internet. internet. And then you hit your Katie Eleanor, and get we've more. also seen our first virtual anchor, Anna oh, Kova, yes. which we Isn't she perfect? a week or two ago. Yes, Isn't she she's perfect? supposed to be the 28-year-old perfect anchor. Have you seen her? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> 28, that's her. That's her given age. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really. Wait a minute. Let's Wait a minute. Now, now, now I have to confess that I don't want a vision very much. Uh, it, it, you, it, I think it, your station ran the story as well. I was on vacation for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was right, on vacation. I was on vacation yes, for two weeks. And she, she, she can she read she the news and, and she years has years inflections and emotions. Well, and what, what, what is she a robot? Uh, is it an image? It's an image. Yes, a whole anger. Oh, I'm she's, I missed perfect, it. she's perfectly groomed. Yes. Her hair but is. Her hair is green. It's green. Okay. I'm not green? worried. She's I'm 28. <laughs> I'm not worried. Why is she 28? She'll be well, 28. Not that I, no, right? not that That's I, you know what? what I wondered too. But you know what? I have to say this. I realized that when I came to Pittsburgh, I was 27. Mm -hmm. They hired me at 27. They were the 11th largest market. It was as a reporter, but with the idea that in nine months I would become a weekend anchor. I mean, I was, and I watched them come into our market, and we're, we're much smaller now. We're 20. We've dropped, you know, nine months. And, 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 and I'm thinking, why are you, you were this age. You came in here at that age. So just, you know, get a grip, Sally, and <laughs> grow up and be nice. But I think it, it is, when you, the 40s are the best years of my life. But, well, I'm here to tell you that it's not <laughs> my life. Absolutely. So it's only going to get better. I love, I love your term <laughs> reinventing. It's, it's only you know, going to get better. But, but I have to say that sometimes you do. You, you start looking, and, and it's, it's really natural. You start thinking, oh, no, oh, no, oh, oh yeah. no. You because look over your shoulder because over your shoulder are just dozens of young women who love to be doing what you And when we were 28 men in, there weren't the 40s. No, there the women in their women. 40s. No. Well, so this is new for us, and right? And the other problem You're not yes. in your 40s. The other problem that occurs <laughs> to me is that since this is such an economically driven business, these women in their 20s are willing to work a lot cheaper yes, than, they are. Yes, they are. than the women around mm -hmm. this table. That is definitely that true, is true for the Pittsburgh market. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is yeah. definitely mm -hmm. true. But I think there is a lot to be said, truly, for looking at someone who has been around a long time and feeling a comfort level with that person and also feeling like with a per persona but with their credibility and I think that some of the younger women can look at the women around this table and hopefully even aspire to that kind of that level of, of trust in this market. Well you know there are a lot of a lot of um one sitting out there mm -hmm. watching all of you uh, right now and, and mm -hmm. down a little bit because I do before we end this conversation I do want you to give advice to to all of the women who do want to uh, follow in in your footsteps I want to talk to you though about um, about the men you work with do you have to have good history you don't have to. What, was, to, it, what was it? Do you have to your co-anchor? I think it makes it a lot easier. It does make it a lot easier. Yeah. 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 easier. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to become an actress. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know? and I've had to. It, not here, not in Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. but I've, I've worked with co-anchors in the past who were difficult, and I didn't particularly... <laughs> 
like them as people. But here I have a great, great co-anchor and uh -huh. enjoy working with him. And boy, what a difference. Makes it really easy and pleasurable. And, and that's a big difference on the air. It does. It makes it people certainly read it. does. Absolutely. Oh, people read know. It. People, people know. Can tell. Now you just you just co -anchor. Co -anchor. yes, Jay Harris. He is wonderful. We get along very well, and he picks up on my cues, and uh, I couldn't ask for any better. And I have, as Peggy said, I have worked with a couple that uh, made it very difficult for me. Very difficult. So I'm I'm blessed. <laughs> let's let's just turn it about discrimination. Uh, which is worse today, age or um, gender discrimination? I won't touch that with a 10-foot ball. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, do you know what? The reason I won't touch sure it is I'm not sure because I don't really think that I, I mean, personally, I don't think I've been a victim of either one. I think it's really, I mean, I've women who've really, you know, the business has been very right. good to us. Yeah, so yeah, I, very, you know, I know that it's been difficult for some women, but I am so well, fortunate. You see, I, I agree. I mean, how, how, how can any of you be angry? How can I be angry? The business has been wonderful 40 some years and what's going on. What about the, what about the show in the newsroom? Um, when I started, when I was at Channel 4, I was the only woman in the newsroom. How many women are in your newsroom now? I, I would say the majority of the reporters are women. I, I, not, and I think one of the reasons is, uh, has to do with how many women are going into broadcasting as a major in college. Scott Baker, who's, who's I don't think there's anyone who knows more about this business than Scott. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he just, just, he's such a sharp mind. And I think Scott told me once that 60% um, of the graduates now in communication schools around the country are women, maybe as high as 70. Mm -hmm. And I don't, maybe you guys can hazard a guess as why that is happening now. Mm. But and I've, I've heard mm -hmm. bosses say it's mm -hmm. hard to find an older guy who's mm -hmm. still yes. well, You know, part of it is too, I think women, frankly, are more expressive. You that's know? a good point. And, and, that's a very and good I think point. that that makes a difference in, in, in presenting a story or in viewership so that the men next to her or the man next to her has often to work a little bit at not looking so stiff. You know? I also well, think it has to do with starting with salaries now. Well, because starting true. salaries are, are, are not great and there are a lot of men now who can go into high tech and women mm -hmm. and uh, who can make much more starting out. Every single one of you, all four of you, could move on to a bigger market. You could move on to that. Anybody have any desire to do that? It's no. nice of you to say. Sorry, I'm always sorry. I'm 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 Everything that is real in life is, and, you know, and that keeps me here. What I what I finally realized about myself when I, I was in New York interviewing at um, WCBS, and um, and I, I realized at that point because that I never was really ambitious in the business that was intermittently envious. I envied what they did only once in a while, and I thought envy is not a really it, it's not a real health motion anyway, and not a reason to try to climb the ladder. It's just so beautiful. It's, it's green. Oh, it's so green. Mm -hmm. The trees are just wonderful. So, I mean, well, I interviewed good. in New York about 12 yep. years ago at WABC, and I remember getting out and looking at Manhattan and thinking, I can't live here. I have no desire to do this. And work at work level. I, 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 they own you. I guess, Patrice, you and, and I are the only two homegrown mm -hmm. people. We were both, you were born in Sheridan, right, and I right. was born in Green Tree. Where, did, where were you born? I'm from Portland, Oregon. Actually, I was, I was raised in Portland, okay. Oregon. And you are from... Yeah, New England, though. And Chicago, Illinois. Always thought I'd get back there. And I love the story, and uh, I haven't heard it for a long time. You came to Pittsburgh, and you were in a parade. Oh, don't you love it? Well, when I came to Pittsburgh... <laughs> this is a true story. I was funny when I came here. I was so desperate to get married, Sally. I just really, that's what I really <laughs> wanted to do. And but I was enjoying being in broadcasting, <laughs> and I decided, you know... The clock's ticking. I'm going to date anyone, any guy who asks, because I'm going to accept all offers. That's the only way I'm going to meet somebody. I will date them. <laughs> but my husband, who had been out riding his bike, we were doing the Anything That Floats parade, and we were just taping it. And he he rode up to me on his bicycle and handed me a card and said, Peggy, I've always wanted to meet you. I'm on level. I'm not crazy. You know, give me a call. Son. I have seven children. I'm Catholic. You know, <laughs> slipped in a, two, a few nebs that, you know, showed we had something in common. 
And um, we started calling him the bike man at the station. Did say David Johnson say, did you call the bike man yet? Because he was on the bike. No, I'm not going to call him. I don't think I should. Call him. Give him a call. I didn't call him. He called me. We went out to lunch, and we were engaged seven months later. <laughs> he so. was wonderful, though, because I met him at the airport. Her husband came up to me. We were on a flight. And he, he was not your husband at the time. And he came running over. Did he hand you a card? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. no, no. He, came, no, no he came running over. I thought he was great, because he came mm. over, and he said, Guess what? And I said, what? He said, I'm dating Peggy Finnegan. Oh. And I said, who are you? And he was so excited. And oh, he's such a gem. Nice. He yeah. really he's is. A, he's, he's a great he's guy. He's a great so guy. I, I, mean, I have to tell you, I have to tell you a story. You remember, Peggy, when we were at the White House? And you were oh, yeah. yes. And they yes. heard us in there way ahead of time. And we're sitting there. And she and I talking about the neurotic relationships we'd had. And she was <laughs> advising me about how and then she was married at the time you I think you'd already had you I, one I, I at least had one you had one and, and she, she was, was so sweet because I think I was going through a, a, a difficult period you know, right? <laughs> she was telling me she was she telling me well you know oh I you know I, I mean I'm not going to go into it on the air but and she said oh and it was just and I and you know and you just walk away and, just, and here we were talking about this right before we were the president speaking about the rotting relationship yes around this, this business that I've told me. I think your family has an iron. My husband was 16. I think you knew my father. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when the family was a grounding that kept this, you know, kind of real. Okay. What is the most embarrassing moment you have ever had on the air? About 15 years ago, this was my first job in Kearney, Nebraska. Uh, it was about 10 minutes before we were to go on the air. We had a 10 o'clock news set. And I was wearing a, a nice navy blue blouse or something. And I was taking the mascara wand and putting my mascara on, and the wand dropped on myself. And I was 10 minutes away from civilization at that point. This station was out in a cornfield. And the only choice I had was to borrow a blouse from a girl at the station who was, um, I think, an intern or something. But it was see through. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I mean, you could. <laughs> Oh, no. I can't. And I was going to say something I said on the air, but no, she reminded me of what was probably the most embarrassing moment. It was about five minutes to air, and I have to use an eyelash curler because my eyelashes are just straight. And I'm there with an eyelash curler, and I'm, and of course, I'm always doing things really, really hard, and I'm just squashing as hard as I can, <laughs> and my arm goes like this. No! Oh, oh, every oh. eyelash out. Do you know what you look with a bald eye? <laughs> Oh, oh and terrible. I said, it was awful, and it, oh God, it hurt too. It hurt so bad, and I oh. was like, and so I was, I was, I thought, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I started to get eyeliner, a big eyeliner, so, and then I, I said to the director, please do not shoot me, because I had one eye that had all this mascara on it, and there was nothing on the other. <laughs> and then I went on vacation, and so I would, all I remember is I would cut little eyelashes, and you know, put false eyelashes on, and then they'd get stuck <laughs> on towels in hotel rooms. <laughs> but that was probably the super safe. All right, oh, I don't know. It's it is involving some animals we had on one of the Pittsburgh days. Oh, I think I know where that's going. Yeah, it was, we had an accident mm -hmm. um, on the set, and we were taking care of these well, animals. We have some animals coming on Angels very soon. Well, and remember, uh, very young children animals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can be a problem. I, I'm going to insist that the Pittsburgh Zoo Diaper brings them. diapers. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good Peggy. I can't really think of it. One thing that I can think of, uh, when I was pregnant, I had a story about um, Ronald Reagan's presidency, and I said Ronald Reagan's pregnancy, and I didn't even know I said it. Didn't know I said it at all, but I sensed some hubbub, you know, around me. And when we went to a break, David said, did you hear what you said? And I really didn't even know. I had pregnancy on the brain. I all of you are, are beloved. All of you are revered. But I'm sure occasionally there's a little bit of criticism. How do you handle criticism if you get a nasty letter or if you oh, got a letter tough. from somebody saying, gee, Sally, you look weird the other night with eyelashes and eyes. <laughs> I, I, I obsess and I sometimes have I you cry. cried? Oh, I, have I, cried. I have cried. I have cried too. Cry, obsess, people call everybody and, and ask them, do they really feel that way about me, my friends? Yeah. People don't realize, and they they never sign. Yeah. Some if do. it's hateful, yeah. I've noticed. If it is hateful, 
in the other side. So you can write back and say, I'm so glad to hear no. you've got oh, some. I, I, have, I have burst you know, into tears in the newsroom good. because of it. Yeah, I'm yeah. usually yeah. so kind and That's so true. nice. Or if somebody's critical, oh, that yes. just the way it is nice. Once in a while, though, you get a really hateful, nasty letter. You may remember. remember. They, are they, are, they are right. You remember how Bill Burns handled that, and he told all of us at the station was he got a letter. If they ever send you an address mm -hmm. and sign it, he, he get a mad letter, and so you write back, dear, I want to let you know if there is writing to me and using your name. <laughs> ah, that's a good one. I like that. And send the letter off. Yeah, that's so that's that's it, it that reminds me, though, of what we were talking about during one of the breaks, is that people think they know you. And that's what hurts the most. Somebody will not look you. They don't even know you. The person they see on TV and decide they don't like you when they have no idea what kind of person you are inside. And it's that's such bothers true. me. But it is and such an intimate. It's such an intimate meeting. It is still so intimate when you can say that. Or in the kitchen, in my bedroom, I do know you and I do have the right to feel. Sometimes I'll think, well, gee, why is she wearing that, or why isn't he wearing that, or or how? So how I think that? that fans and viewers feel that they do have gifts rights. What what would people really be surprised to know about you? Tell us just mm. some little thing that mm. that they might be surprised to know that you clean the horse's barn every day. <laughs> no, I don't. I actually, don't you do I that don't, I don't muck. I, I don't. I didn't ever really stop stuff in mind. I mean, it's really, oh, it's it's actually, small. it's great exercise. Um, we were talking about it, and I'm just going to go ahead and say we were talking about it during one of the breaks. I think people would be surprised to know that I never really wanted uh, a career outside the home. I wanted to be married, had children, and um, I had not great married, and, and unfortunately, we got divorced. And uh, always expected that I would get married and have children and and work in the home. I mean, be in the home, be a homemaker. It never happened. And I, and I don't know, and I, I can't say why, probably because I, I kept thinking, well, I work harder, you know, and someone will see me, I'll think, oh, what a nice person, and actually the opposite happened. Not that they didn't think I was a nice person. <laughs> I don't mean to say that. But I think people would be, and I don't want anyone to feel sorry for me because I have been blessed to have this job and get to work with children all the time. Yes. Yes. Probably be. Oh, yeah, I, I, I I'm very touched by your, by, by, by your honesty mm -hmm. because I think it's so important. I, I know that everyone that sees you probably probably thinks, wow, there is the quintessential career woman. Yeah. I mean, that's that's all she's ever wanted to have. Yeah. And both know Sally have known that about her for oh, a long yeah. time, too. And I remember, too, telling Sally when I was pregnant, and I thought, how am I going to tell her this? It, I you know what? And, what and, and my friends have been so wonderful, especially the ones at the station. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Everyone is pregnant at our station. And I, I mean, I'll go to the bathroom and just sob. No, no. You know what? It's just, it's, it's, it's part of it. You learn to deal with it. And you know what? There are so many people that need love and so many kids out there that need love. And oh. this job gives <clears throat> all of us the opportunity to touch so many right. people. Right. We are blessed. Mm -hmm. We are Sally, really blessed. I, I have Absolutely. been out there. I've been out there with you. And I know I've, I've served on some boards with you. And there is no one in this city that devotes more time, more energy yes. than, than working Because with I don't have charities. kids like these women yeah. do. And, That's uh, why. They do as much with their children. It's yeah. amazing. Well, but I Sally doesn't do this because she has to, because of her job. She does it because she, she wants to. And I think that's what people need to know about Sally. Well, I, I, I think genuine. also need to know that you guys do the same thing. You make the same appearances, and you're juggling kids and husbands, and I think you're marvelous. I don't know how you do it. I'm sure you What would we more. really be surprised to know about Patrice? Well, I don't know. It's, it's terribly well, exciting. But, but, but you were going to talk about your son. Well, sure. I was going to say... <laughs> Well, that's exciting to me. Yeah, both of my children. I, well, I, I think to know they are that my, you have a 20-year-old son is pretty surprising. And to who's me. a football player? I was surprised. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you're yeah. 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 so right yeah. down there. And we're real excited. That's right. You know, we did go down there. Um, I'm very proud of my children. That is what I'm most proud of and most excited about. Guy is. I mean, I've been very blessed with this wonderful job. But my, my kids are my real job. They've always been my real focus. And Guy and Lauren are, are the two. Really the most important. Yeah, it's kind of a homebody and kind of a mom and a football mom, and, and that's what's really yeah, important. Yeah. Yeah. Try. Oh, I don't know. You know, people would be surprised about a lot of things because, as we talked about before, I don't think that they really know us at all. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose people would be surprised to see me. Um, <laughs> I'm sure they are surprised because every morning I go out and I have no makeup on and my hair's in a ponytail and I'm just running around, running my errands, and I don't care if they think that I don't look 
pretty or that I look unkempt and I'm sure they think that Never. but I Not don't you. you know I don't <laughs> care and I'm sure they'd be surprised to see me interact with my children because you don't see that on television. Right. Sheila? I was going to say the same thing uh, until I jump in the shower at one o'clock unless I have to get out of the house I'm in my terry cloth bathrobe and my fuzzy slippers <laughs> and I've had some uh, you know, pistol service people come to the door, <laughs> and you should see the look on their face. They cannot believe that I actually look like that. And this is not true. I have seen both of these women without makeup. Uh, uh, oh, they oh. look fabulous. No, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. And let me tell you something. She's not going to say this. She has one of the most stunning voices I have ever heard. She does music comedy. Oh, well, you are uh, sweet. Thanks. She is. She, she, she could have. You know what? She could have worked on Broadway. She really well, you are all extraordinary women. I am very proud to know each and every one of you. You have made such a contribution to television broadcasting news in Pittsburgh. And I just hope you all go on forever and ever. I don't want any of you to retire. You so, well. Barbara Van Cherry, you're going to have to wait a long, <laughs> long time. Uh, this has been one of the more thrilling moments of my life to have the four of you. Yeah, I don't know, have you ever done this before? No, no, it's been no, such it's fun. So terrific. Much. Not. But to watch how you talk to us about reinventing, and I, I have watched you for many years. It's wonderful. It's well, wonderful. thank you, and uh, I am not about to retire anytime soon. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. I never started to work yet. Good That's how much I love what I do. Oh, wow. And I love all of you, and I, I'm so glad that you were able to eavesdrop today with these wonderful women. If you just tuned in, Sheila Hyland, Sally Wigan, <laughs> Patrice King Brown, and Peggy Finnegan. Mm, I love to all of you. See you again next week. Be well, everyone. Set provided by Linders, located on Yonker Street, McKee's Rocks. Two acres of fabulous stuff. It's been a Saturday night family tradition for generations. Enjoy the nostalgic musical variety of The Lawrence Welch Show, coming up next here on WQED 13.